this example shows the tolerance stack up analysis for the dimension shown there which is the 11 millimeters that is the gap between the back plate and the cover formed as a result of the 31 basic dimension and its surface profile tolerance which is a GDNT approach and then the thickness dimensions as shown by the linear tolerancing given on 5 millimeters on the spacer and 25 and 50 millimeters on the backing plate. Now in this example we will be showing a combination of usage of the GDNT symbols as well as the incorporation of plus or minus tolerance that is conventionally applied in the manufacturing practices. Now the objective is to look at and investigate what is the maximum tolerances that are possible in the gap between these two components that are shown over there as a result of the influencing dimensions shown in the screen. Now the assembly build is to do a gap analysis to find out what is the tolerances that is coming in as a result of the tolerances that have been specified on the dimensions that are given at the part level. For this we need to create a study first. In that study we get what is called as the node based or the root based analysis wherein all the dimensions which are influencing is brought in. Now for clarity of view the root node is shown on the top in green and that is moved to the center for visibility and all the dimensions which are on the annotations provided scientifically in every part of the model coming into the assembly is shown over there. Now based on the plus and the minus combinations based on the directions whether you move to the left or to the right as you move in the one dimensional loop the individual dimensions which contribute towards the gap tolerance are added into the history tree. As you see it, the study keeps on getting progressed as all the dimensions are brought in. In one of the cases, the two dimensions, namely the 25 millimeters and the 50 millimeters that we showed earlier in the drawing, comes in from a single path, so that is brought in as one node. So the two dimensions are added, one positive and one negative, depending on whether you move to the right or the left, as shown in the dimensions in the first screen. It brings about the tolerance tax influencing coefficients from each one of the dimensions that are contributing to the assembly build which in this case happens to be the gap. Now doing a roll up calculations we find out what would be the dimensions tolerances on the dimension of the gap as a result of the influencing dimensions from every one of them. In roll up since you do not have the control limits other than the control limits the specification limits specified we are showing the graph wherein which is based on a normal distribution for the worst case tolerancing from a three sigma approach. You can go up to the six sigma approach for the roll down calculations. The roll up calculations provides you with the what is the lower control limit and the upper control limit. In this case it is going to be plus or minus 0 0.905. So against a nominal gap of 11 millimeters plus or minus 0 0.905 is what we are getting. Now if we were to control or achieve a particular tolerance that is desired within that particular gap calculations, then we input those values as the control limits and do a roll down calculation based on Six Sigma as shown on the left side pane and then we do a roll down calculations for the same node history tree in one touch of a button and we are able to now plot for the worst case combination what is the PPM rejection as a result of what we have given because we have given outside the limits there are no rejections. Now if we move in the lower specification limit as well as the upper specification limit inside the bandwidth of the lower control limit and the upper control limit we start seeing rejections in terms of PPM. This enables us to identify which are all the dimensions which are influencing the PPM rejections and how much PPM rejection we would get as a result of the lower and the upper specification limits coming within the lower and the upper control limits. This helpful tool in addition to providing you with this information you will be in a position to refine it. Now we are refining it to 0.75 let us say plus or minus 0.75. We are using bilateral equi bilateral tolerancing only because that's the way tolerance stack up calculations are done in practice. Since the normal distribution is taken as symmetric with the mean shift as well as with the um, process capabilities coming into place depending on the tolerance stack up calculation methods used. 
bidirectional equilateral tolerancing is what is enforced in tolerance stack up calculations now you see for plus or minus 0.75 which is 10.25 to 11.75 the ppm is provided there as 12913 ppm that will be the out of spec for 1 million pieces this helps us identify which are all the dimensions which are all the contributors and every one of them we find out what is the what is the contribution from each one of them and if we were to give a cost based on the weight that is given there in the in each one of the nodes you would be in a position to optimize the tolerances according to what you deem fit for least cost tolerancing this approach helps us to look at functional deviations of dimensions as shown in this bar chart here to see which are the tolerances which are influencing the results at the end of it now the contributing dimensions once you touch it then you would be in a position to adapt the process accordingly to bring about a change so that process centering takes place and deviations are within control and qualitatively better products are produced this approach in tolerance stacks helps in achieving the ppm status that we want an exhaustive report is provided at the end of this based on these values that are calculated in both the roll up as well as the roll down approach inside tolerance stack calculations in sigmund works Thank you.